Johnny Minerals, Minerals FC. Right. He's back again. Those of you who thought he wasn't on the fan cams, not true. Um, but, I mean, I was with you, Johnny. Um, really, really interesting listening to some of the other people talking about Havertz, talking about Mount, the performance. Overriding negativity, if I'm being honest with you, just, just for those individual players today. Um, I thought different. I know you do. Of course. I mean, let's have it right, people, yeah? We've come into this game. The gaffer's got how many how many players that are not available? Well, our squad is absolutely thin right now. Um, so the, the choice, the, the team selection was limited for the gaffer. Um, he played a back four. So all the wrong ones that wanted a back four, you got your back four in the first half. And we all saw how that turned out. And the thing is, right, Gallagher, the first yellow card, in my opinion, wasn't a yellow card. I don't think he gets sent off. But he's trying very, very hard, the kid. And everyone's coming at Connor. But listen, it's a new role for him. It's a, it's a, it's a much higher pressure at Chelsea Football Club. And for me, I feel like Connor was a bit unfortunate. We got the red card and that changed the whole dynamics of the game as early as it came. So, when you look at the balance of the team right now, the balance wasn't there. It wasn't there from the get-go. Um, you played Rhys James as the right wing-back, which you had to do, um, because if you didn't do that, you would have been really caught out. Um, Defence-wise, we played Trev, didn't we? So, you know, Trev's game, there's a lot of talk of him leaving the football club. The gaffer's put him in to show him what he's got and has he got the minerals. And I think today he was a bit shaky, but for credit to him, in the second uh, second half, he was playing on the left side of defence and he's a righty. So we have to understand that role. But there were very, very um, dodgy moments, dodgy spells with Trev. Um, Giorgino, as we know, he actually played quite well in my opinion I thought he did very well today um, and in context to the way we were set up and the misfortune of the red card everything was against us in this game we had chances in the foot before the red card we didn't take them I was very frustrated with Raheem Sterling uh, losing the ball too many fucking times he lost the ball um, and you rely on players like that to hold the ball I think Averts and Mount, they did a lot of running, a lot of tracking back, um, trying to get involved in the game, but they weren't getting Mason Mount in the game. In this first half, they did not get Mason Mount in the game. When you don't get Mason Mount in the game and he's isolated, you struggle. You struggle with in every department, whether that's creation, um, possession, control, positioning. You have to get him into the game. And the midfield, Loftus-Cheek and Jorginho didn't do that. The wing-back struggled to do that. And and that was just the way, the way that that setup was you know there's not much you could ask for from the from from all the players today because let's have it right the most important thing was to get the three points on the board and we've done that which is major for us um in in uh, playing 10 men for pretty much the whole game um so i am ecstatic about that i'm very proud of every single player on there i'm not here to come in slander my players like all these wrong ones like to do because at the end of the day there is a lot of issues at our football club there's a lot of issues. The gaffer himself is not getting the players that he needs. We've got less than, what, five days till the transfer window ends. And we've only just brought in uh, Fafana. I'll big up Leicester for Fafana. Thank you very much. 70 million. Lovely jubbly. We'll take that. Um, but, you know, it's not enough. We're losing players. We've lost too many players. And there's players that don't want to be there and that are unhappy. And the gaffer actually had to play some of those players today. And... They were a bit shaky, in my opinion, but we got the job done. You know, we got the job done. But what, what, what do you want to say, Alex, about... You want to talk to me about Averts? you want to talk to me about Mount? What is it? Because uh, Mount, everyone wants to come at Mount, yeah? But Mount, Mount being taken off was a tactical change in the game. It was something that the gaffer had to do because, funny enough, all of you lot that called for the back four, we played the back four and it didn't work out. We got caught out too many times. So, in the second half, the gaffer gets in the dressing room, lands his minerals, and what does he do? He goes to a back three, wing-back system, plays Loftus-Cheek with Giorgino, and he plays uh, Kai and Raheem up front. And that was it. Sit back, absorb the pressure, see what Leicester got, and then we hit him with pace and directness. And you need a striker on there. So you're not going to just have Mount and Raheem Sterling. You need Kai Havertz there, who's got the physical ability. He's got the ability to hold the ball, head the ball. And let's have it right. Havertz defensively was fucking unbelievable. 
You know, the amount of running, I'd love to know his kilometres in this game because he, he was all over the pitch, all over the place. What do you say to people that talk about Havertz and say, well, it's all good running, it's all good getting involved, yeah, yeah, yeah. we want goals? Yeah, yeah. well, it's all good because we won the game, didn't we? It's not like we lost the game. We won the game. Havertz played his role today. Havertz was, was quality for me today in, in the circumstances because the balance ain't right. The balance ain't right in the team. The midfield's all fucked up. You know? The defence is fucked up. We've only got Thiago Silva in there. Who's who's going to play? Trev's not going to play. You know? Reese can't play there all the time because we want him as win back. The gaffer knows that. But now he's going to break. Now Koulibaly's going to come back. And then you're going to have um, Fafana in the side. Now the gaffer's got options. He had to play back four in a way. He was forced to play back four. He didn't want to play back four. But you could see the shape was wrong. It didn't suit the players. It didn't suit us. Although we created some chances, we weren't really like at the races coming back off a loss uh, from uh, to Leeds. But Havertz, for me, what, what do you want? The geezer maybe could have had a chance or whatever. But this was a real, a real uh, dig your minerals out session yeah this is what it was all about today this was about mentality this was about fighting against fighting for the gaffer not being in dugout this is about knowing that there's unhappy players at this football club knowing that there's players that want to fuck off and leave and some of them are on the pitch and you have to respect players like Kai Havertz who wants to be at our football club Mason Mount wants to be at our football club these are these are the issues that people like to disregard because they want the clicks and they want the views and they want this and that what not bar bar bang and smash yeah, it's all of it. It's all bullshit. You know, if you cannot back your players, Kai Havertz has, more than, has done more than enough at this football club at just 23 years old. He's just turned 23. He's delivered at our football club. All you lot twerking for that cement-booted rat last season and backing him, backing him after, after he ratted our football club. You lot are coming at Kai Havertz like he's fucking Lukaku, bruv. It's unacceptable. Yeah, give the geezer a chance, yeah? Let him have some fucking consistency. Last year, he didn't get any consistency, the geezer. And he's a, he's a quality player, Kai. You can tell he's got all the minerals and he's going he's gonna to develop into a, a world-class player, yeah? But today, there's nothing. I can't fault the players on that pitch today. None of them. They got the result. That's what mattered. We had 10 men for the whole game. It is a fantastic result. And credit to my gaffer, Tommy T. Credit to the gaffer. Anyone that's coming at the gaffer, Tommy T haters, yeah? You're all in the mud and you belong in the mud. And you ain't a Chelsea fan coming at the gaffer, yeah? There is no reason to criticise the gaffer, yeah? Masking it with all this criticism bollocks, yeah? This is an agenda you're putting on the gaffer. And he don't deserve it. I see the gaffer, thanks to Alex, I was, I was able to get a little clip with the gaffer sitting in the seats, yeah? Fully focused on the game. He gave the instructions. And listen, you earn your, your strike you earn your right to show what classy manager you are or how an elite manager you are and at half time and I want to make this point we kept the ball at the start at the end of the, at the first half and that was very important in this heat to keep the ball keep possession because you could have gone down 1-0 at half time right we didn't we they wanted to get in the, in the dressing room the gaffer came in and what did he do he changed it tactically he took Mace off he, he made it went to a back three so they're comfortable and compact and defensively sound and that's exactly what you pay the money for the gaffer for and that's why you respect the gaffer because he's an elite gaffer he's got all the minerals my gaffer and I back Tommy T all the way and everyone should back him everyone should back him I do just want to say something because we, we talk about people that have been against um, you know the gaffer or the club whatnot. at the end of the game Tushu actually went onto the pitch yeah he did I've got a clip of that and he and he was told to leave and I just feel like, I don't know, with the officials, with everything, it's the small things that add up. And he's got so much pressure on him. You're gonna, we've, we've spent a lot of money, but that does not mean we're better than we were last season. He's, he's under pressure. Right, so, so when you talk about we've spent a lot of money, in reality, we haven't really. We've lost a lot of players as well, all right? We've lost Werner, Lukaku, uh, Hakim Ziyech on his way out. I think uh, Cho's going to be on his way out. That's four ready. If Pulisic goes, that's five in the front line. You've only brought in Sterling in the front line. You've brought in Cucurella as an as a Emerson replacement and potentially Alonso replacement. All right, so that's cover for Chile there, who needs to be eased in because he's come back from a bad, bad injury, right? Granted. And then you've lost um, Rudiger and Christensen. Those two defenders, all right, now you've brought in Koulibaly, who for me is a, is, is, a, is a world-class defender, and I think he's an upgrade on Rudiger, in my opinion, yeah? And 
you haven't replaced up to now you haven't replaced Christensen so now we've brought in Fafana now he's got his two centre backs but you still need another one you still need a midfielder right you still need attackers and we're about four days away or five days away from the transfer window Bailey needs to get that wad out of his pocket and, and, and land it he needs to spend the money and, and give the gaffer what he needs right now because right now our squad is thinner than what it was last year and granted the problems last year were a lot worse so I don't doubt my gaffer I think the gaffer's going to handle this no problem but let's have it right all these other rivals and these other platforms that come on and talk about Chelsea spending 70 million on Cucurella 31 million on uh, Koulibaly uh, buying some youth spending 47 million on Sterling this is all great great money this is great a uh, uh, very good clever way of spending money um, buying the quality that is 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 um, proven in the league apart from Koulibaly you've got Kukurela and Sterling proven so where's the talk about Manchester City spending over 200 million for Haaland and all these other players where's the energy for Liverpool spending 80 million on their striker where's all this energy where's all this pressure for these managers there's no there's all the pressure for Thomas Tuchel everyone's happy to lap it on even the fans at Chelsea want to put pressure on certain fans in the fan base want to put pressure on Thomas Tuchel that now he's spent a bit of money no we haven't even started we're in a major rebuild and everyone has to understand that this is a transitional process. We've been in transition since fucking God knows, I can't even remember. You know, we've got players from five previous managers in this squad at the minute. And we need to, we need to get the balance. The gaffer's trying to get the balance, bring in youth in. That's good enough and ready to play. And bring in Premier League proven players that he wants to buy. And some talent from across Europe. And unfortunately right now, listen... Everyone's twerking for Aubameyang, but Aubameyang's a problematic player. Whether he's played for Tuchel or not, has he got the has he got the hunger to come to Chelsea and want to play? He went to Arsenal, and what and what did he what did he do at Arsenal? At Arsenal, he was he was a liability. Arteta got him out, and Arteta's a Arteta's a wishy washy manager. All these Arsenal fans getting getting the big bollocks now. Listen, they're a tin pot club. They always have been. Chelsea will always be bigger than them, yeah. But at the end of the day, right? He's got rid of him, and if they kept Aubameyang, maybe they would have made top four and wouldn't bottle it. But that's just down to him finishing chances. But at Chelsea, it's a different level. It's a different um, mindset. And, and the expectation at Chelsea is much higher than at Arsenal and the Spurs and what they've signed. And that's why I feel Bamiyang, for me, I'm not too excited about it. I don't feel it get done. If, 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 if I'm thinking about a signing right now, um, I'm looking at Gordon. And I think the gaffer's very clever in going for a player like Gordon who's um, technically good, young, hungry, loves to press, loves to, get, loves to get stuck in. He's got Premier League experience now. He wants to learn. He wants to step up from Everton, who are not in a, a very good state at the minute. And I think that I think the gaffer will elevate this player. All right, Even at 60 million, I couldn't give a toss. It's not our money. Let's spend the money. But Frankie de Jong, for me, if you can't get Declan Rice, I think Frankie de Jong is the player we should go for. But I don't believe that we are generally in for him. And I think maybe Bowley needs to knock on the door of Brokelona and say, look, here's 90 million. We'll pay the 80 million. Let's get him. Because I think you need that, that Modric type player, a player that can dictate the play, who's got recovery. He used to play as a centre back. He's got def he's defensive minded and attacking minded. He's got a great pass, great progression. He's a very intelligent, quality player. He's got minerals. I think we need someone of that stature to come into the football club to give give Thomas Tuchel breathing space and time to bide in to get a defensive midfielder next year. Because let's have it right, we're not going to get Declan Rice. 150 million is just not going to happen. Um, West Ham don't want to sell. No, no. Well, they don't want to sell. I think if you go in there with an offer, does. Do they accept a player? No. I think they just want pure money. They don't want to sell, but they're in a tricky situation. I don't know if they played today or if they lost or whatever because they're bottom of the table at the minute. And I'm sure Declan Rice wants to leave. Get the Rolls-Royce in, uh, in the Chelsea because he, he wants to play there. I want players that want to play at our football club. That's what I want. And Aubameyang, does he want to play? That wave he made, uh, uh, the, the Man City friendly, did it look like he wants to leave? And to me, it says, no, he doesn't. And all of a sudden, the brown envelopes are coming out now saying, you know, oh, it's, we're negotiating, oh, Barcelona don't want Alonso in the deal, they want him separate. That doesn't make any sense to me, you know. Barcelona can get Alonso and some money and offload a player on, on the high, highest wages. That makes sense to me. But I don't think we're going in for him. And, and that, let me get proved wrong. If the case we do sign him, fair enough. But just because you're associating a Bamiyang 
being managed by Tuchel doesn't necessarily mean that he wants the player now at Chelsea. I think they want players like Nkuku, who we might go for next year on the, when his release clause hits about 60 million. I think he likes Leo. I think he wants Neymar. But this club is not going to go and do that. And this is where you have to, where you have to sympathise with the gaffer and respect that he deserves to be given what he wants. He's earned his stripes. He's earned the right to be able to build our football club. Everything he's gone through at this football club, last year especially, aside from winning, it's how he deals with things. How he represents our football club is second to none. He's elite. And this is why Bowley, Clear Lake Capital, um, Egg Barley, whoever's behind the scenes, they need to really take note of what, what Thomas Tuchel wants and if it is a Neymar blockbuster player if it is a, a, a Frankie Dion or even if De if it's Declan Rice just go and pay the money pay the money because can we afford to go through this season with a slightly weakened squad, squad granted improving the quality in the first team but not having the squad there can we afford to do that I don't think you can and Gaffer's not a miracle worker. I know he's, he's, he's deemed that by the fans, you know, he's done this, done that, but he's, you know, you have to respect that he's a human being. And he loves this club. He wants to be at this football club. But let's have it right. I think the, the owners have got to land their minerals now. They've got, to, they've got to step it up. We're coming to transfer deadline day. What we for the signs we've done are quality and probably the Gaffer signings, which shows their quality, but it's not enough. Where's all this time gone? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? It needs to be done now. I don't think there's really much more to say, Johnny. Um, to quote you, you've landed the minerals. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you for coming on, mate. Yeah, Hope pleasure. to see you again soon. Pleasure. Up the chills.